It's safe to say the community is sceptical of Na'Vi coming into the Katowice Major, and with good reason, considering their underwhelming showing during the Ice Challenge. Today we're going to explore a couple positive traits of the CIS team by breaking down some rounds on Terrace Overpass and see in what areas Na'Vi is still dangerous versus the world's elite. Kicking off on this round, we're going to see several of Na'Vi's strengths, and at the start we have Electronic and Simple outside of Monster. Zipnix here has crossed the right side, and as we can see, they get the entry onto him. The thing to note here is how they instantly back off, not overcommitting because they don't have the numbers with them to move onto the site in a very favourable scenario. Jumping forward, Dupree got one from Connector, but was quickly pinched onto and traded out, and what we're going to see now is a quick sequence of mid-round calls. So here, Na'Vi has two in Connector, Electronic in Sewers, Edward towards Long, and Electronic is going to throw a couple of nades onto B, perhaps to draw a rotation or bait utility. Now I'm fairly sure Na'Vi wanted to quickly split onto the A site, but the instant Edward gets spotted out Long, a very fast call comes in to go back, and execute onto B instead, and watching this one play out, Na'Vi smoke mid site and Heaven, then trade out onto the bomb site. Glaive though manages to stay alive in the smoke for a bit, trying to make a play, but will ultimately go down. During this round, there were quite a few things we can learn about the CIS team, and the first of these was the aggressive early play out monster. This is a fairly common sort of play for Na'Vi to make, and I think they do so a fair amount more than your average top team. In this scenario, Na'Vi had no intention of getting all the way out and onto the site, they simply wanted to put their players into a favourable duel to get an entry kill, and as long as Na'Vi walked away with a 4 versus 4 it would still be a positive result for them. The other standout was Zeus's quick and decisive mid-round calling, which switched on a dime once Edward was spotted long, and although they still ran out onto the site with two players, their numbers advantage and trading was enough to close it out. Getting into this next round, Na'Vi had one player saving from the previous, and they decided to force around the gun to keep up the economic pressure, which will be something we'll explore in more detail later in the video. So during this round, Simple went down in mid to Devices Orp, and we're going to watch on board with Electronic to see how Na'Vi reacts. What we're going to witness now is why many people, including myself, consider Electronic an extremely strong mechanical player. As we can see, Electronic gets flashed through the monster smoke and finds two incredible entry kills before getting a third for good measure. This play was certainly risky, but what I like about it is how decisive Na'Vi were after going a man down, making the instant decision go for a kill to even up the odds, and for a second, let's talk about Monster and the B-bomb site in general on Overpass. So as the T's come out of Monster, the angles are fairly linear, and the jewels onto the barrels area tend to favour the T's, which is why CT's playing from the barrels will normally sit on their smoke and jiggle around, just playing for information. Many as an extension consider Overpass B sites quite difficult to hold, and this is why you'll see many top teams and players try to make plays out of Monster. So if you watch Na'Vi on Overpass quite a lot, you'll see them exploit the Monster area many times a half, and this is where having two of the best individual players on the planet in Simple and Electronic can come in pretty handy, to put it lightly. Next up, we're going to watch another round where Na'Vi displays some of their best traits, so as we can see, the CIS team is going for long control here and swing out on two flashes. Note that Na'Vi here throw one deep and one close flash, which is important to properly catch as many spots in long as possible with those flashes. Skipping ahead, Astralis found the opening kill using a nice boost behind flowers, and watching with Simple, we're going to see Na'Vi running a full contact play onto A, with the AWP going in first, and here Simple is going to find a massive impact kill for Na'Vi, opening up the site, and his teammates waste zero time before getting up and onto the site. I'm going to let this one play out because the next two kills are just simple things. So I think combining this round 
with the previous one, we're starting to see how Na'Vi, particularly in man down scenarios, can utilize simple and electronic to get them back into the rounds. But note that whilst they are doing this, the team is playing around them so that they're either going in with utility into a decent duel or there's teammates around them who find the trade kills. Now for this round there isn't anything in particular that I wanted to talk about, it's more the overarching approach that I'll focus on, I'm going to leave it playing in the background. Whilst I'm talking keep tabs on Na'Vi's team play and great trading, it gets them into a free versus free after plant, which is a good situation for the terrorists. Let's delve into a topic that's synonymous with Na'Vi, and this is all about playing very aggressively with regards to the economy. So coming into this round, they won the pistol, lost the first gun round, and on this low nades buy, it's very important to keep in mind that Na'Vi know there is no AWP in play for the CZ side, which makes playing with low nades much more viable. Now on the CT side, I think they take it a little too far, and I've seen games where they bought themselves out of it, but the T side favours itself more to this approach because of the plant money and having a cheaper buy in general. During an interview with Simple, I asked him about Na'Vi's aggressive buying, and the gist of what he replied was that on the Terra side, when they know their opponents have a weak economy and no AWP, then Na'Vi will often force just trading into areas for map control, and having watched Na'Vi, this philosophy is shown quite frequently. In terms of the smaller team play of trading, having someone holding reswings whilst another player works close, etc. I think Na'Vi are right up there and this example that I've been talking over is a great showcase of how good Na'Vi is at playing on low economy which when you add in some sensational individual players the CIS team will break the opposing economy a remarkable amount of the time. Finally let's get into the following round in this match. Now the previous one went down to one versus one and Na'Vi again know that Cloud9 do not have an AWP, so considering what we just talked about, it shouldn't be a massive surprise to see Na'Vi forcing into this one. At the start of this round, Cloud9 Molly T stairs, and Na'Vi didn't want to give up one of their smokes to put out the Molly, The so Cloud9 took the control of the entire playground and fountain area. Whilst this is going on, Simple works out of Monster and starts looking around the site, Notice that whilst Simple was aggressive looking for a favourable duel, he doesn't overcommit and swing all the way out. Anyway, the call comes in from Zeus and Na'Vi are going to run a contact play out of Monster with just a Heaven Smoke. Once again showcasing his ability, Electronic gets a huge entry kill onto Rush and now Cloud9 are going to have a very tough time getting back onto the site considering they were already playing retake. Na'Vi end up cleaning up this round during the afterplant, and Cloud9 lose all five players, meaning the CIS team achieved exactly what they wanted in full resetting the CZ side, and now they're going to move into a decent lead as their opponents have to double eco. Let's talk about Na'Vi's terrorist play and how this all fits into the bigger picture. So I think Na'Vi are one of the best, if not the number one team at playing on low economy and force buys. And I know that we didn't touch on it here, but Na'Vi also paved the way in my eyes for calling counter terrace rounds on weak buys. Because of this, especially on the T side, Na'Vi applies so much economic pressure to their opponents and alongside their other strengths like decisive mid round calling, plus simple and electronic who are without a doubt the best duo on any team in the current landscape means that Na'Vi, if they get into control, they can run away with Terrace Hearts against anyone. As always, there is another side to the coin though. If the CTs can build up money and or get onto double orbs, I think Na'Vi struggle more so than say Liquid or Astralis since playing more execute heavy or more structured with utility and taking map control isn't Na'Vi's strength relative to the type of rounds that we've gone through. The counter terror side is certainly where I have more concerns for the CIS team and in Katowice I'll be watching to see if they have made some changes to address these doubts. Also bear in mind that Overpass is among Na'Vi's strongest maps 
which plays their strengths in many ways. From my perspective, I think playoffs at the Major is likely for Na'Vi, and top 4 seems like an achievable target. But why don't you comment below with how you think Na'Vi will reform, and if you enjoyed that, why don't you hit that like button, get subscribed, follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.